Good evening. My name is Tim Mochek, and I'm a violinist in the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra. And we're all members of the Opera House Orchestra, and the Opera House Orchestra is kind of uh, unique here at the Kennedy Center in that we are heard a lot, but not seen very much. Uh, we play almost uh, all of the productions in the pit of the Opera House. We play all of the ballets. We'll be playing the uh, Trocadero de Monte Carlo in a couple weeks. Um, and then after that, we'll be doing Turandot. And oftentimes, our members are in the pit for musical shows as well. So as I say, frequently heard but rarely seen. And that's why this is such a treat for us tonight uh, to be out here uh, on the stage and playing for you uh, sort of right, right before your very eyes, as it were. Uh, we have a, a kind of a really um, program of diverse instrumental music. Uh, the theme that we had for this program was kind of uh, a little bit uh, groups that are a little bit off the beaten path in terms of chamber music. So we start off with the string quartet, but not just the regular string quartet. A regular string quartet has two violins, viola, and cello. And in this string quartet by Ignaz Pleyel, we have one violin, two violas, and cello. And one of our violists, Johanna, is gonna tell you about that. And then we have a bassoon quartet, and the way that nomenclature goes is that it's a, it's a bassoon, one bassoon with violin, viola, cello, and then a horn quintet, so French horn, uh, violin, two violas, and cello. So again, a little bit off the be beaten path, um, but we think we're, you'll enjoy this a lot, and we certainly do. And I'm gonna turn it over to Johanna to tell you a little bit about Ignaz Pleyel. Hello everyone, my name is Johanna Novik. I'm a violist in the Opera House Orchestra. Um, yes, our first piece by Ignaz Pleyel um, is an interesting instrumentation as you can see. Um, he wrote 70 quartets and out of all of them, this is the only one that has two violas instead of two violins. So you'll hear a lot of viola featured, which is a lot of fun for myself and for my colleague Elizabeth um, to get a little more um, just virtuosic uh, playing in, in um, some of this classical music. Um, a little bit about Playel. He was a student of Haydn. And interestingly enough, during his time, he was arguably one of the most popular composers in the world, if not the most. Um, he was popular in Austria, where he was born. He was popular in France. He was popular in England. He was even popular in Nantucket, like Massachusetts, Nantucket, like all the way out here. Like he, and very, very prolific. Um, he uh, got his first official start um, as assistant to the Kapellmeister at the Strasbourg Cathedral in France. Um, the French Revolution was going on during that time and um, music in churches was not exactly smiled upon. So he, like his mentor Haydn, decided to go make a name for himself in London. He was so popular there. He made a fortune for himself, um, came back to uh, France and bought himself a whole chateau with a moat and everything and um, got into a little trouble with public safety because they were curious about the money, his history in the church and all of that stuff. Um, but eventually he was able to um, save his career by claiming that he was writing everything for the New Republic henceforth. So he was able to keep writing um, his compositions and very, very many of them. Um, some just quick interesting facts about him. Later on, he established a publishing company. Um, he was the inventor of the study score and started his own manufacturing company for the Play L Piano, which is still around today, I believe. So it's a very interesting piece. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, and yeah, I guess it's just a sign of someone who was so popular at the time, and yet it's kind of a shame that we don't hear it as often. So I'm glad to see so many Play L fans here, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Chris Jewell. I'm the assistant principal of the students here in the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra. Um, I just thought I would tell you a little bit about this composer in case you are not familiar with Francois Davien. Um, uh, as a wind player, I certainly am. He wrote several hundred pieces for us for uh, in um, situations just like this, winds and strings mixed. Um, he was a contemporary of Mozart. He actually was known as the French Mozart. Their, their birth and death dates were actually quite similar. Um, another uh, thing he had in common with Mozart was he was uh, quite a fabulous uh, instrumentalist and he would write pieces for himself to play. So uh, Davien was a, a, an amazing bassoonist and a flautist. Um, he played bassoon in the Paris Opera Orchestra and he taught flute at the Paris Conservatoire, which was uh, a hotbed of, 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 of wind playing. Um, we are excited to play this piece for you. It's not a piece that you get to do very often as a bassoonist. Um, so here is the Francois Davien uh, Quartet in C. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Good evening. I'm Christy Klenke, the assistant principal horn with the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra. I just want to thank you all for spending your evening with us, and I hope that you've enjoyed our program so far. This final piece that we're about to play is a quintet by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who I'm sure you're all very familiar with. And this piece is sort of informally known as the Horn Quintet. Um, as hornists, we are very fortunate that Mozart wrote a lot of solo works for our instrument, and that's in no small part due to the fact that he had a good childhood friend um, who grew up to be, in addition to being a cheesemonger, was also a virtuosic hornist. And so Mozart wrote a lot of music for him. His name was Josef Leutgeb, excuse my pronunciation. And um, throughout his life, he wrote the four horn concertos for him, and these pieces are played um, by horn players constantly, even to this day. They're wonderful pieces of music. Um, but this piece, which is a little bit lesser known, actually predates those pieces. It was written in 1782 and is one of the first pieces that Mozart wrote for his friend. And they were known to have a sort of um, teasing and um, joking kind of friendship. And so a lot of the music that he wrote is very playful, and he would even put jokes and sort of barbs at his friend in the music um, at some of his struggles as a horn player. Um, but one thing that's unique about this piece is that rather than being accompanied by a full string orchestra, um, it's a chamber piece with four string players. And like the Playel, it has two violas rather than two violins. And the viola has a range and a timbre that's a little more similar to the horn. And so I would imagine that might be why Mozart chose this instrumentation. But we hope you enjoy this horn quintet uh, by Mozart.
Thank you for joining us at Millennium Stage. For more information about